Thanks for tuning into this week's Nutrition Tip with Nancy. I'm delighted to present this video. And you saw the title was, Should You Be Keto Friendly? So what does keto friendly mean? Well, I'm going to cover that in this episode. And I'm going to um, talk to you about why when you see it on the grocery store shelves, you might just want to ignore it. So I'm going to help you understand what the keto diet is and if it's right for you as well. So let's start by understanding the history of the keto diet. It was actually developed in children's hospitals as a treatment for epilepsy in children who were not able to take medication or for whom the medication was not effective. And this dietary protocol limits carbohydrate to fewer than 50 grams per day. And to put that into perspective, a one ounce slice of bread contains about 15 grams of carb. So this is an ultra low carbohydrate diet. And then what they do is they replace the carbohydrate calories with fat. So about 75% of the calories in the day are supplied by fat. Now the ultra low carbohydrate diets are very effective for treating epilepsy because the diet reduces the amount of glutamate in the brain and it enhances the synthesis of something known as GABA, which makes it less likely for a seizure to occur. So how does this work? Well, during digestion, carbohydrate is broken down into glucose, the body's natural source of energy. But without sufficient glucose for energy, stored fat is burned instead, which results in ketosis or a buildup of ketone acids. Currently, though, many people are promoting the keto diet for weight loss and for treatment for type 2 diabetes. The premise of this fad is that if you deprive the body of glucose, the primary source of energy for all the cells in the body, then the body will use the ketones produced from stored fat. Promoters have created many versions of the diet, but all are deficient in carbohydrates. The strictest versions derive 5 to 10% of the calories from carb, 70 to 75% from fat, and about 20% of the, uh, the calories are coming from protein. And now many people do lose weight, though most likely the major contributor is to weight loss is not the burning of ketones, but rather this severe caloric intake because of the restricted food options. Dieters often lose weight without feeling hungry because fat enhances the feeling of satisfaction. And it's possible that the presence of ketones may also suppress the diet. So keto-friendly foods that you see in the market may have no added sugar and contain very low levels of carbohydrate. They may also be very high in fat. And they may also contain a lot of unrecognizable ingredients, which you may know means to me that they are ultra processed foods. I'm going to give you my top 10 reasons for not promoting the keto diet. Number one, I don't promote any food pattern, which restricts entire categories of whole foods because they're both challenging to sustain and they may result in nutrient deficiencies. Also, meeting the keto's diet requirements means cutting out many healthy foods, making it challenging to meet nutrient needs. And some of the nutrients that may be deficient include potassium, magnesium, and vitamin C. The ultra-low-carb keto diet is also deficient in fiber, a vital nutrient for gut health. 7 to 80% of your immune system is in the gut. So without fiber to feed the gut bacteria, the immune system is suppressed in just a matter of days. Fiber is a form of carbohydrate. So you can't have adequate fiber and have a low carbohydrate diet at the same time. It's just impossible. All right, so now we're on to reason number four. In the short term, lack of fiber causes constipation. And in the long run, it can result in colitis and irritable bowel disease. Number five, 
since no type of fat is restricted in the diet, the intake of unhealthy saturated fat levels can quickly harm the heart. The diet also increases LDL, that bad cholesterol in your blood, and not surprisingly so because the diet can be very high in saturated fat. People like binge on bacon and butter and cheese because they're all high in fat. Number six, you know, this is probably my opinion rather than science, but I'm going to tell you it anyway. Just because the body can use ketones for energy doesn't mean it should in the long run. And from my perspective, the evidence is in the symptoms, which include headaches, bad breath, and something known as the keto flu. Number seven, once ketosis occurs, the body actually begins to lose muscle mass, and it can damage your most important muscle, the heart. There, this loss of muscle can be long-lasting and thus have a harmful effect on metabolism, making it harder to maintain healthy weight in the future. Evidence suggests that extended periods of ketosis increases insulin resistance and promotes fatty liver disease. So what happens when the person goes off of the keto diet is that blood sugar levels, which may have been slightly abnormal prior to the diet, now are varying widely because the body just is not handling carbohydrate well anymore. But the last two are my primary reasons for not promoting this diet. Extreme weight loss diets don't teach new healthy habits. And when the restricted regimen ends, weight loss is, is replaced by weight gain. And that's a yo-yo diet. And it just isn't healthy. And lastly, dieting sucks the joy out of eating. I encourage people to give up diet think mindset and focus on eating mindfully to nourish your body. All right, so I'll finish this up by reminding you that the key to better health is long-term healthy habits. Reduce your intake of refined carbohydrates, ultra-processed foods, artificial sweeteners, and other additives. Focus on eating more plants. Fill your plate half with vegetables a quarter with a healthy starch, like a whole grain or a starchy vegetable, and a quarter with a low saturated fat protein. Include in your diet vegetables, fruit, whole grains, beans, nuts, seeds, fish, especially fatty fish, and olive oil. And when you do, you're on a sustainable food pattern. For proof, Look to the people of the Mediterranean region. Thank you for tuning in today. Please share this video with your friends and relatives. And if you haven't already subscribed, please become a subscriber. And um, let me know if you have any questions that you'd like me to answer in future episodes. Have a great week. Nourish your body for good health and eat mindfully. Thank you.